Hello, everybody, and welcome to today's episode of Building a Zoo in Bedrock. So, before I start off this episode, which was pretty productive, we got a few things done, I feel like it's worth mentioning that I did notice in the last episode, the audio for, you know, the footsteps and just the gameplay audio in general was way too loud. So, before filming this, I went into my settings and I turned the volume down to about 19. So, I hope that that remedies the problem. But anyway, we can continue on. In today's episode, we made a few minor changes as well, so I feel like I'll showcase those now since they're not a big deal. So I went into the emu exhibit and I changed it up a bit. I noticed that they were drowning in the water because I don't know if I can catch it right now. Oh yes I can, but they do sit. See that one standing and the other one sitting. And what they would do is they would sit in the water. Even though it was one deep, I think like their hitbox would be in the water and they'd drown. So I had to uh, go ahead and remove that. And instead I just put this little shelter up. Um, no big deal. So it hasn't changed that much, but it did a little bit. And I think, I think this leaf pile is new. I think I did put this in recently. And then the other change, that was made was this little window to the red panda exhibit. It just felt odd to me that you would walk through this path and just see a wall. So I decided to put a window here and you can see a little bit into the red panda exhibit, but not that much. But I feel like it definitely opened the area, I guess. I don't know, I just think it feels a little better. So I'm glad that I did that. So let's continue on to the more major changes that were made in this episode. As you can see, we have a little penguin exhibit here, and this is for the Humboldt penguin. The Humboldt penguin isn't the regular penguin that you would see in maybe Happy Feet or something. It's not an Antarctica, like, tundra penguin. Now, I don't know a ton about these penguins. Look at him. How cute. Now, as you can see, these penguins are just a bit bugged out but we will get to that in a second. I think the first thing I'd like to do is go ahead and show the little time lapse of this enclosure being built. So I'll roll that footage now. Now, regardless of the fact that this time lapse is sped up by about eight, it is still kind of a long time lapse, and I thought that this would be the perfect time to explain how I managed this for anyone else who wants to. All I did was I downloaded a little screen recorder because the iOS screen recorder is not very trustable, may I say? And I went ahead and I recorded with that. I went ahead and I sped up the video afterwards and imported it here for you to watch. Another question that I do expect to get a fair amount of is how this add-on is downloadable. In the future, I do plan on filming a tutorial for it. But for those of you who want it now and aren't willing to wait for the tutorial, basically I get on mcpedl.com, I download the add-on as you'd expect, but then I import it in the ES File Explorer, which I use to import the file into Minecraft. Of course that may not make perfect sense, but as I said, I am going to eventually down the line upload a tutorial. In terms of where you can even find the download link to this add-on, just search up Why Creatures on mcpedl.com. That's the name of the add-on. You'll know it's the right one if you see it's made by Gabriel Castro. Okay, I hope that was a fun little time lapse. So I'm going to go ahead and show you around the exhibit. Down here is a little place you can kind of enter and you can look at them swim around. And as you can see, they're quite bugged out. And as promised, I will explain. I don't know why they're bugged out, but the issue was that they would go into the water and swim way down to the bottom and they just stayed there. What I wanted to do to remedy this then was to put barrier blocks right here all the way around the water and then spawn in new penguins on the surface so that there could be penguins up here and down there. That didn't work, as you can see. Well, it worked, but um, they went straight for the water and now they just kind of stand there. And there are still four penguins up top here, but they're kind of glitched into each other. I don't know what the issue with that is, um, but 
Castro, the maker of this add-on, is still editing it and putting in more updates, so I just hope in the future maybe it can get fixed. I'm not too concerned about it because you can still see the penguins and they're still cute, so I'm not bothered by it. The next thing I built in this episode was a little eatery, and I'm going to go ahead and show the little clip of me making it. I wasn't able to have my um, extra little camera account filming because I was actually building this at the same time as Dawson was building the penguin exhibit, so I had to film this in first person, but I hope it's still kind of fun to watch. And as I'm sure you anticipated, I'm back in post-production with more to say. If you're watching this and wondering why in this episode I have so many jump cuts, it's because I edited this video how I would actually edit other videos, meaning I would always cut out parts where I would breathe in like this <gasps> to catch my breath, and I would also edit out parts where I used crutch words like um, so, but, maybe, so on and so forth, unless I had to keep the crutch word in for everything to make sense. When I created the first episode, I didn't edit like this because I wasn't taking the series very seriously. It was more of a joke to me, but then I discovered I actually kind of had fun with it, and I decided I wanted to take it seriously, and that's why this video not only has better quality, but better audio quality too. And the audio quality is better for a few reasons. One, I cut out my crutch words and my breathing, except for these little segments here where it's just me. And I also went ahead and I mashed together my two videos. I had two versions of every recording, a low quality one and a high quality one. But the issue was my high quality recording was high quality and video quality, but had no sound. And then my other recording had low video quality, but then sound. The reason why this was even an issue was because the video recorder that I was using wanted me to pay a subscription monthly so that I could get both of these good quality abilities all together in one video. To that I said absolutely not and I found a loophole. I just used the audio of the low quality video and then put it on the high quality video and shut down that audio on the high quality video. If anyone is wondering what screen recorder I use, I use something called RecGo, and I don't know exactly how good it is in comparison to other video recorders, but I know that the other screen recorders I found either cost money just to get in the first place, or kinda stunk. And to be honest, I felt as if everything I found had its own limitations that made me not want to use it but I knew I still couldn't use the iOS recorder because it just didn't work. Okay, so now that you watched that, I'm going to go ahead and show you the inside of my little eatery. I went ahead and called this Safari Sam's Wild Eats. I really couldn't come up with a good name, but it can be a placeholder. It can be changed at any time, so I'm not concerned about it. On the inside here, I decided to add a lot of seats and put some item frames on here as plates, and then I put food in it for detail. Now, I know what you're thinking. Why didn't you use flower pots as cups and that's a great idea only that in the bedrock edition you can't put a flower pot on a trapdoor now i know you can in java you can't here but i'm not that upset about it i think it still looks pretty good as you can see Peta would be upset because i did hire a coyote to uh man the station here and i made a little menu and the special is lamb chops which is maybe a little weird for a zoo but uh oh well and then i put the food up here so that you know this was actually functional and here's the dessert table and down here i have some desserts i guess and then in here are the beverages and these are just like i said the different seating arrangements and none of these are actually sittable except for this one but to be honest i wasn't really going for functionality when i built this at all so i'm not too upset 
on the outside here, I added some little acacia trees just because this spot felt so bare and there wasn't really enough room for like an enclosure or anything. So I just added some trees. I think it looks okay. I know you can still see some zoo back there, but the point wasn't really to cover everything up, just to kind of add a bit of attitude in the area. And then out here, I added two little seats. I didn't put any plates on them, but I added them. Personally, I'm going to be honest, I don't love this building. In fact, I don't even like it. Dawson does, but he says that about everything I build, so I can't really, can't trust that he really likes it. So I don't know, it just feels like it's missing a lot. I went for a simplistic look on purpose because I was kind of going for like a villa type of thing, but then I was like, no, I want it to be deserty. And I just, I don't know, I had two very clashing ideas when I built this, and I think that's why it turned out the way I did it did but i i think it's all right i may edit it in the future but it's okay for now that's it for today's video guys thank you so so much for watching i appreciate it if you actually support this series i know a lot of you are probably watching it just because you're bored and have nothing better to do but that's fine because that's why i'm filming it so double negative makes a positive i don't know if you liked the series subscribe and i actually will have a download link in the description for this add-on i'm going to have a direct download link but i'm also going to have a link through link for ties which is what um, the creator of the add-on uses to make money i think it's very hard to download it using the link for ties thing so if you struggle use the direct download but please try to actually use the link for ties link because that's how you can support the creator and it'll motivate him to make future updates which helps me because you know i'm using the add-on i will eventually make a little video on how to download the add-on and actually put it on your worlds but I don't have that quite yet. Thank you for watching and bye bye!